that's, it. That's very, that's very, very nice of you folks. I, I, I was. Uh, oh, I wanted to. Tell, I, I know what I wanted to tell you. And I might not too if I oh, uh, feel like it. But um, I, my wife Terry and I, uh, celebrated our. Celebrated our 40. No, we didn't. <laughs> last last May the 13th, we celebrated our our 40, 40 first wedding anniversary. I said, "Well, thank you." <laughs> and I, uh, uh, they said it wouldn't last six months, but we had to make it go nine because she was pregnant. <laughs> And, I, and she said to me one day, Hon, I think the baby's coming. And I, I looked out the door. I didn't see a child in the neighborhood. <laughs> well, anyway, I said we celebrated, but we had a couple of folks over. I think that did it. And uh, um, we went to bed rather late that night. And uh, I was lying there looking up into the darkness, you know, thinking like a man would at a time like that about his wedding, about his wedding night and, and uh, the natural things, you know, that married couples think about when they're married. Uh, and I said, I didn't make a move. And I said, it certainly, certainly wasn't like this to, uh, 41 years ago, was it, hon? And she says, no, it certainly wasn't. I said, boy. If I remember, remember correctly, I didn't even take time to take my, 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 my socks off. She said, I know, and tonight I could take the time to knit a pair. <laughs> my, my brother-in-law, Frank, Frank, called me up one day and said, will you come over? and help me. I say, sure, what's the trouble? He said, uh, I locked my keys in my car. I said, yeah, I'll come over right away. He said, well, hurry, because it's raining and the top is down. <laughs> he was riding down a highway in New York one day and uh, speeding, and the uh, police started after him, and he kept speeding up, you know, and finally they caught him and pulled him over. So didn't you hear the siren and see the red lights behind you? He said, yeah, I saw him. He said, why did you keep speed, speeding up like you did? He said, well, about three weeks ago, my wife ran away with a highway patrolman, and I thought he was bringing her back. <laughs> Riding down the highway with, with Boyd, the producer of this, uh, what we're doing, and uh, we saw a car zigging and zagging and zigging and zagging, you know, right in front of, in front of us, and pretty soon that car just boom, right over in the ditch on its side. And uh, I, I said, Boyd, would you go back there and, and, and check check out and see if we can be a, uh, maybe we can be a good some a good some a, 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 a good a nice guy, you know. <laughs> and he went back and he looked in and the window was open and he could tell that the gentleman driving in the car was a, a man of man of the cloth and. Uh, he said, excuse me, sir, are you hurt? He said, of course I'm not hurt. The Lord is riding with me. He said, well, you better let him ride with us. You're going to kill him. <laughs> these three, these uh, three guys died at the same time and went up, went up to the pearly gates and they saw St. Peter. And... Uh, said, well, here we are, St. Peter, we're ready to come in. He said, well, now, wait a minute. Uh, I, 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 
now I have to ask you questions first. He said, oh, okay, start with me. He said, uh, did you ever cheat on your wife? He said, no, sir, no, sir. I was tempted many, many, many times, but never fell to the temptation. I never cheated on my wife, not once. He said, all right, then you get to ride around heaven and see all the, see all the beautiful sights in that beautiful Cadillac convertible over there. So away he went. Next guy came up and he said, uh, did you ever cheat on your wife? He said, well, I'm afraid so, yes sir, about twice. I was, I was tempted and I, and, and I went on through it about two times. He said, well, I'm, I'm sorry, you have to ride around heaven in that Volkswagen convertible. <laughs> And uh, he said, well, I deserve it, I guess. And the third guy came up. He said, did you ever cheat on your wife? He said, heck yeah. <laughs> Many times. If I was down there right now, I'd probably be cheating on her. He said, well, then I'm sorry. You're going to have to go around heaven and see the sights on that skateboard. He said, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. So away he went, and pretty soon he, he saw the Cadillac parked up at a corner by the curb. The guy was in there, a dejected look on his face and everything, and uh, uh, he skated up by him. He said, you get to ride around heaven in this beautiful Cadillac, and, 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 and you're sitting here looking like, like you lost your last friend. He said, what happened to you? He said, I just saw my wife go by on a skateboard. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you something you don't know. I know you folks remember when President, uh, President Nixon was in office and uh, he um, had to have a physical uh, checkup uh, <laughs> at, at uh, Bethesda Naval Hospital every year, all presidents do. And uh, he went in to have his checkup one time, and the doctor said, okay, Mr. President, get your clothes on, come in the office, I want to talk to you. He said, okay, so he went in the office, he said, what's the, what's the story? He said, you may be the most, the, the, mo the healthiest president we've ever had in the White House. I just have to take one more test. And if, if it turns out all right, you will be the healthiest president we've ever had in, in the White House. White House. So he, uh, he, he said, I want you to take this little bottle, take it home. After dinner, don't eat anything, snacks or anything, and don't drink anything. In the morning, take this in the bathroom with you and, uh, and bring it over to me later. And he said, and if it doesn't turn out cloudy, without a doubt, you will be the greatest, healthiest president we've ever had in a new White House. Just as long as it doesn't turn out cloudy. And when the president went to bed that night, he was saying his prayers, and he said, dear Lord, please help me make this one thing perfectly clear. <laughs> I used, to, I used to play football. You played football, didn't you, for Kentucky? I used to play football. I played, yep, I, I uh, played football for the late Paul Brown, one of the finest men who ever lived. And he, one day I, I was playing, and uh, I mean, we were playing, our team was playing. And I was sitting on the end of the bench, and the folks were up in the, up in the stands was yelling out, We want Brooks, we want Brooks, we want Brooks. We want bro Brooks. And uh, finally, Coach Brown called me up and said, uh, Brooks. I said, yes, yes, sir. He said, why don't you go up there and see what they want? <laughs> he came in the locker room one day. After we won a game, he said, I called his wife. He said, honey, we won today. She said, honestly? He said, that's beside the point. 
I, uh, I went home one day, and dinner hadn't been prepared yet. And I wondered why it hadn't been prepared. I said, where's, where's my dinner? And she said, I went to a women's lib today, and I listened to all the things that the ladies had to say, and by golly, if you want your dinner, you just go fix it yourself. Well, cooking is my hobby, and I didn't, didn't mind fixing it, so I fixed it. And uh, when I finished, when I finished, <laughs> when, when I finished my dinner, I said, "Hun, would you get me one of my cigars, please? And she said, what did I tell you a while ago? I'm women's lib from now until freeze is over. And I said, well, you go get your cigar yourself, she said. I said, how would it be if, if uh, you didn't see me for about three days? She said, that would suit me just fine. So the next day, Wednesday, she couldn't see me at all. Thursday she couldn't see me, and Friday she could just barely see me out of this one eye over there. <laughs> Is that a good one? You never heard that one before? Want me to tell it again? <laughs> I, uh... I, I, when I, I was in... Excuse me. I was in Ro Rochester, New York, for a few years, and uh, and I was a, a disc jockey. And uh, one morning, I got a new, a new, a new uh, sponsor, Orange Orange Tang. I remember that, and I remember having that at home, and it was good. I liked it very much. You ever have Orange Tang? Uh, that's nice. Well, I. Uh, I uh, I liked it very much, but I, I decided to make my own. I made it out of prunes, and uh, <clears throat> orange tang it's, it's wonderful. But I I think a little prune tang goes a long way once in a while. <laughs> I want I. Uh, Last summer, while I was here, my brother, Pleasant, uh, called, uh, asked if I wanted to play golf one day. I said, you know I don't play golf. I just tried it at the tournament, uh, the contest out there. And he, he said, well, we're having a little thing over there, a little tournament, and uh, over at... Uh, Bellman College, Bellerman, right? And I said, well, I can't, uh, I don't play well enough to play. He said, doesn't make any difference. He said, they'd love to have you come over and join the crowd. And, uh, and uh, they got a lot of prizes. And it doesn't make any difference how you score, uh, which is something I haven't done for 10 years. And uh, <coughs> <coughs> he said, you have a chance to win a very nice a very nice prize. So I went over and they showed me the courtesy of le uh, they, uh, letting me hit first. And I went uh, up and, and, and I put one of those little sticks in the ground. Then I put a ball, a ball on it. And I swung at it and I was really happy. I knocked it away out in the field there. And uh, they started me out. They knew I'd never played before, and they started me out with two dozen brand new balls. And when I hit when I hit the ball out there, a gentleman came up and tapped me on the shoulder and said, "Mr. Brooks, would you like to have a caddy?" And I, I thought I won a prize. I thought I won a car. <laughs> By the time I got I, I got to the eighth hole, I didn't have any balls left. And I looked at my caddy, I said, you've got to be the wor worst caddy in the whole world. He said, I don't, I don't think so, Mr. Brooks, that'd be too much of a coincidence.
I never. I remember I, went, I accidentally I hit a tree and got in the fairway, and uh, I was look, looking at the ball and looking off toward the green, and I tried to make my caddy or somebody who might be hearing it uh, think that I knew something about what I was doing. I said, son, do you think I, I can get home from here with a, a four iron? He said, I don't even know where you live. <laughs> uh, a fellow went home uh, from church one day. He had a big black eye, black eye. And he, he, uh, his wife said, how in the world did he get that? And he said, well, when we got up to seeing him, uh, some lady got up and in front of me and you can tell uh, the, from the way she was sitting her dress was stuck in the, in the back and I just thought I'd help her out and I reached over and I, and I pulled it down and she turned around and hit me with her purse well the next Sunday he came over home from church and he had another black eye on the other side and he, that same lady was standing in front of him when he was singing a hymn. He looked and this, everything was just fine. But he said, heck, she likes it the way it was, I guess. And she goes, <laughs> I was in the na Navy. And uh, one day... Uh, I came upstairs to the, from below deck and uh, I came up to the captain and I said, Captain, Captain, is it okay if I go downstairs and get something to eat? He said, if you go downstairs and get something. How long have you been in the Navy, sailor? I said, about six weeks, sir. He said, well, for your information, downstairs on board ship is below deck. For your further information, that's forward, that's aft, that's starboard, and that's port. If you ever make another mistake like that again, I'll throw you through one of those little round windows over there. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, you know, uh, I don't know what reminds me of this other than uh, <clears throat> my brother-in-law that I was telling you about, Frank, was a, was an a astronaut, you know. He wasn't too dumb, and uh, he went up one day, and while they were around, going around and around, it, it came time for one of them to take a. <coughs> I bet you thought I was going to say something else, but <laughs> to take a walk in space. <coughs> Excuse me, you please. And a frog in my throat. First piece of meat I've had in a week. <laughs> and uh, so my brother, brother-in-law got up. No, the other fellow got up and, and opened a trap door and uh, went out into space. And he was walking in there and for about a half hour. And pretty soon it's time for him to get back in the capsule. And he got out the door. He knocked on the door. My brother-in-law said, who is it? <laughs> it was, uh, let's see, uh, he told me, we were at his house one night, he said, you know, we're going to make a capsule to take us up to the sun. I said, what are you talking about, sun? You'd burn up before you got halfway there. He said, no, we're going at night. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what happened in my marriage, but something happened to it, and and Terry decided that we should be sleeping in in separate bedrooms. And uh, yeah, oh, no. yeah, you come over tonight, and I'll show you why. <coughs> and I, uh, <laughs> uh, let's see, I was 
I woke up one morning in my bedroom about three o'clock in the morning and something made me think maybe we shouldn't be sleeping in several bedrooms. <laughs> so I walked down the hallway and uh, tried, and her door was locked, was locked. So uh, I just knocked on her door and she said, you just get away from there. I know what you're knocking for. I said, yeah, but you don't know what I'm knocking with. <laughs> I, uh, let's see. I, one morning, I mean, I already started this and I didn't finish it. My mother... We used to wring a chicken's head off, you know, and bring it in the house and pluck it. And uh, that's what she said she was doing with it. And uh, and then she got down to these little pin feathers, little, uh, uh, really little hair sticking out of the skin, you know. And uh, she used to take it over to the gas range and turn it over to the flame and burn those little hairs off of there, you know. And ter Terry was doing that one day. With a chicken, what else? And uh, <laughs> and so she she said, well, to herself, she thought, well, he's not using his chic electric razor anymore. Why not try that on my bird? <laughs> so she went and got my chic electric razor, and she brought it in and ran it over the bird, and it worked beautifully. And she wrote a letter to the Shrek Electric Razor Company and told them about it. And they sent a letter back to her thanking her for the idea. They sent her a $1,000 check. And they said, from now on, we're going to have three razors on the market. We'll have a man Shrek, a lady Shrek, and a chicken Shrek. <laughs> First day of Christmas, my true love gave to me one shot of gin and a partridge in a pear tree. On the second day of Christmas, my true love gave to me one shot of gin, two cans of beer, and a partridge in a pear tree. On the third day of Christmas, my true love gave to me one shot of gin, two cans of beer, and a parish tree gin in a parish tree. On the fourth day of Christmas, on the fourth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me one shot of gin, two cans of beer, three Burgoo King, and four, four glasses of wine and a par par tree in a pear tree <laughs> on the seventh day six five four seventh day of Christmas my true love gave to me one shot of gin two cans of beer a lot of peanuts and things and, and a, a par trees in a pear, pear tree on the ninth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me one shot of gin, two cans of beer, three shots of wine, and a kick in the ass. I mean, a, and a pot. she told her mother, and a, and a bird in a bush. <laughs> On the tenth day, eleventh day of Christmas, my true love gave to me one can of beer, two shots of gin, four glasses of scotch, and some other stuff, <coughs> and a par partridge in the in the, the tree there, and. On the twelfth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me all of those things I, I said before, and, uh, and a turkey, a duck, a, a, 
and a part of our part treat in a pear tree. tonight I have a, a note at the bank and, uh, and of course I have my wife and I and I have a, a girlfriend all, all three of them are 30 days past due <laughs> my wife my I don't know what happened uh, to our my marriage but uh, we weren't doing too well or I wasn't doing too well anyway and I went to the doctor and I told him about my sex drive he said oh come on it's all in your head I said I know I want you to lower it <laughs> that'll come out he uh let me see, what did he, what did he, what did he say? Uh, oh, about the circus. Yeah, I was telling about the circus, wasn't I? Well, many a I'd sit there many a morning on the curb and watch the parade go by, you know, dreaming and thinking that maybe someday I'd grow up and, and be a clown, a clown in a circus. Of course, my dream never came true. It came half true, I grew up. <clears throat> And, uh, in fact, I did join the circus when I was about 21, 22 years old, and that's where I met my wife, Terry. Uh, we, we, we were aerial performers. We were, we were known as Brooks and Brooks, world-famous aerialists. And I used to catch my wife in the act two or three times a night. <laughs> I possibly could have used another way to phrase that, but uh, but she was what they call a swinger, and I was a catcher. And uh, I would uh, she doesn't swing anymore, and I wouldn't know what to do if I caught her. <laughs> One day I, I was out, out, out among the cages where they caged the animals and kept them there, you know. And there was a little boy there with a lady, and uh, he wanted to see the monkeys, but there were no monkeys in the cage. They, at least they couldn't see any of them. And there was a boy cleaning up around there, and uh, the lady said, Son, why, why aren't there any monkeys in the cage? She sa he said, Well, this is a monkey, <laughs> monkey mating season. And they're up in those little hutches you see around the tops of the cages. And she said, well, you think if I buy a bag of peanuts and shake them down here at the bottom of the cage, they'd come out? He said, would you? brother went home one night his wife was standing before a mirror and buying a mean mink coat he said where in the heck did you get the mink coat she said I wanted playing bingo the next night he went home and she was marrying a double strand of pearl pearls he said where'd you get the pearls she said I got them playing bingo the next night it was, it was a, a gold wristwatch she had on with diamonds in it he said I suppose you got that playing bingo. She said, yes, I did. And I'm going to play some more tonight. Laura and I are going out. And incidentally, would you please draw my bath? And he said, all right. So he put about an inch of water in the bathtub. He says, your bath is ready. And she came in and looked at it. And she said, why didn't you put more water in there? He said, I didn't want to get your bingo card wet. <laughs> I 
I don't know what suddenly remind, reminded me of this, but I, I'm thinking back to the Second Second World World War. I was living in uh, in Buffalo at the time. Uh, I told you I think that Terry uh, lived in Buffalo, and that's where I met her. I met her in a blacksmith shop, and. Uh, she said, I wish you would tell, when you say that, I wish you'd tell the folks that I was, I was looking at some wrought iron uh, uh, designs, and that's what I was doing in there. I said, you were not, you were trying on a pair of shoes. <laughs> <clears throat> but anyway, that's where I got my, that little card. Uh, all you men must have gotten one. Some of you, not old enough to have gotten them, some of you. But it had on there from the President of the United States. Uh, the the uh, greetings. The President of the United States requests that you go to the induction center on such a date uh, for possible induction into the military ser service. And um, so, uh, what the heck, I thought the President of the United States was nice enough to write to me. I ought to be nice enough to go down there and let him look at me. And, and I went down. A bunch of us fellows in my neighborhood got together and they picked us up uh, in a great big bus. <clears throat> and they took us down, it was in the winter time, and they took us down to the induction center. We got out, we went, we went into the uh, induction center and we all sat down there waiting for whatever. And, uh, and somebody finally, uh, I got, I got to this doctor, and uh, he checked me out and checked me all over, you know, and looked at me, and, this, and he finally put a piece of paper down and hit it with a rubber stamp. And uh, so he said, all right, go in that door there, son. And uh, I went in the other door, see another doctor. He said, ben, uh, the first thing it did was make us take off all of our clothes. And uh, we were standing there in our birthday suits. You, know, you couldn't help but be reminded of that famous quotation, one, one of our great presidents, all men are created equal. <laughs> I can give him a little argument in that department. I think. <laughs> they lined us all up in front of this big, long, cold mar marble bench and said, sit down. And we sat down, and it sounded like a bunch of people applauding. <laughs> that was really cold. I, tell you, I can't tell you exactly how cold it was, but when we were standing there, a sergeant came up and looked at all of us, you know, and he finally looked at me and said, are you sure you're in the right room, lady? <laughs> I, people who know me real well re know that I have a very fine mem memory. <laughs> yeah. but I remember things that happened way back when I was two years, two years, in fact, I remember one thing that happened before I was, before I was born. I remember going to a picnic with my dad and coming home with my mom. <laughs> I was on, one time, uh, Terry and uh, Terry and I were on a TV show. You may remember it was called Tattletales. <laughs> and uh, it was uh, run by the, uh, the late Bert Convy, a wonderful person. He was just a, a doll of a guy, honest to goodness. And uh, he, he asked me, that's when they would ask the husband, a question. Then they'd hide the husbands and uh, um, and bring the wives out. 
And they'd tell the wives what the question was that they asked their husband and ask the wife to guess what, how did your husband answer this question? Well, anyway, they said to me, uh, during a romantic interlude, this is something I can't remember anymore, <laughs> um, which do you prefer, the, uh, the, the foreplay or, or, the, uh, or the afterglow? I said, well, I, I, at my age, I don't have any time for any foreplay. And when the afterglow sets in, I'm sound asleep. <laughs> He said, you're on an airplane, sitting by the window, and the airplane is crowded, and you see the attendant coming back with a man, looks like he played professional football, great big, heavy, muscular fellow. And uh, the only seat on the plane that was vacant was the one right next to you on the aisle. And you heard him say to the girl, look, honey, I'm not, I'm not hungry. I'm not thirsty. I'm sleepy and I'm going to sleep and I don't want anybody to touch me. Anybody touches me, I'll kill them. So you take off and you're halfway to where you're going and you suddenly uh, feel the urge. And uh, when you look at him and he, he's got the seat all crowded and there's no way to get out without touching him. <laughs> And my stomach was getting upset. And uh, you remember what he said, don't touch him or he'll kill you. And he, he said, he said what, what? and there wasn't anyone, they didn't have any of those little bags on there that they usually have. And he says, uh, what would you do? I said, I'd, I'd throw up on him. <laughs> He said, you throw up on him. I said, yeah. And then when he woke up, I said, do you feel better now? <laughs> we, used to, we used to go to the, the Rams football game in California. Uh, almost every, every, well, every time they played at home, and uh, I was sitting there one time, we were sitting there one time, and, uh, and I looked over at the aisle, and there were two nuns coming up. I had never seen any nuns at the game before, and uh, they, they were in those outfits that have the big headdress that goes way out like that, like the, I think this is a mother superior at the hospitals, you know. And uh, real why I, someone told me it was the order of the coronet, and I don't know if that's so or not. But anyway, uh, it came up, and they walked in, into the aisle in front of our aisle, and they sat down directly in front of two guys sitting next to us, and they became a little unruly, I think, impolite, and one of them, one of them said, "How do you like that?" I could travel a hundred mile, miles to see a football game and you had to sit in back of something like that. <laughs> that one said, yeah, I'd like, to, I, I, I'd like to get away from here and sit someplace else. And the other guy, real smart, you know, he said, I wish I could go anywhere just so there were no Catholics around. And one of the nuns turned around and said, why don't you go to hell? There are no Catholics down there. <laughs> Uh, do you know that there was a fellow, one day he went to, uh, he was in a little bar room, and, and he thought, gee, I haven't been to church for a long time. I have, I've been such a sinner. I better go over and see the Father and confess my sin and straighten myself out with the church. With the church. 
So he, he went over to the church, and he, he was walking down the aisle, and the father was walking up, and the father said, Joe, is that you? He said, yes, father, that's me. He said, well, for heaven's sake, I haven't seen you in years. He said, I know, Father, and I've been thinking about the, all the sins I've been committing, and, uh, and I thought I better, I'm in the confession, and I better go to confession. And uh, so that's why I'm here to see you. He said, well, that's a great idea, Joe, but it's awfully, it's very uh, obvious as you had a, you, you've had a little party, and I think it would be much better if you go home and sleep this party off and then come back tomorrow morning and see me and I'll be here at 10 o'clock in the morning and you be here and I'll hear, hear, hear your confession. He said, okay. He said, but I think you better hear me now. I've been, I've been pretty bad. He said, oh, you couldn't have been that bad. He said, you did. I mean, what, what did you do? He said, well, I stole an apple off a stand and I've been cursing a lot. And, you know, a lot of things I shouldn't do, ratting around on my wife. And he said, well, you didn't kill anybody, did you? He said, what? He said, you, you didn't kill anybody, did you? He said, no, I didn't, I didn't kill anybody. Who said I did? He said, no one, but uh, I just wonder if it was that bad, he said. No, I didn't. He said, all right, you go on home, and, I, and I'll see you in the morning. You live just around the corner. So be careful. He said, I'll go out there and get hit by a truck. Then where would I be? He said, that, you, only, you don't have to go on the street. Just walk around the corner and go to your home. And he said, okay. So he's going home, and he's walking down the stairs of the church. And uh, a friend of his named Charlie was coming up the steps and he was in his same condition. And Joe said, what do you say, do you say Charlie? He said, hey, hi, hi, Joe. He said, where are you going? He said, I'm going to confession. He said, you're going, you're going to confession? He said, yeah, I go every Saturday. He said, come here a minute. He said, what do you want? He said, come here a minute. He walked up to him, he said, what the heck you want? He said, you're going to confession. He said, yeah, I said, I said, I just told you I was going. He said, did you kill somebody? <laughs> he said, what? He said, did you, did you kill, did you kill somebody? He said, well, heck no, I didn't kill anybody. He said, well, the heck with it. Let's go get a beer. He's only hearing murder cases today. <laughs> I, I, my brother Tom, when he was, when he was well, he, uh, he got married. Was it Tom? He got married to a, a girl about 21 years, 21 years old, and uh, she was about to kill him. <laughs> it's a nice way to go, but I mean, uh, and uh, yeah, he, he went to the doctor and told him. He said, "She's about to kill me. I, I, I can't, can't take this anymore." And the doctor says, "Well, you ever think of charging her every time?" He said, oh, how in the world are you going to charge your wife for something like that? He said, well, if she's going to kill you, you might as well try it. So, so he went home, and he walked in the door, and she's about to grab him. He said, hold it, hold it, jump ball. Uh, 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 she said, what are you talking about, jump ball? He said, I just went to the doctor about you, and he told me you had to pay me every time. And he, he said, five dollars on the kitchen floor, ten dollars on the van, and twenty dollars on the on a king size bed. So she reached her pocket, grabbed a twenty dollar bill, and handed it to him. He said, "Oh boy, at least it's on the king size bed." She said, "No, I want four on the kitchen floor." <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. 
my brother Tom used to have a farm, a farm here in Kentucky, just a little bitty farm, but he grew, uh, he, on that farm he grew apples and hickey, apples and, Tom grew apples and hickey, hick, hick. Uh, my brother Tom had this farm. He grew apples and hickory nuts. Uh, every and this past fall, he had a wonderful har harvest. Had barrels and barrels of hickory nuts and barrels and barrels of apples, and he kept them down in his cellar where it was kind of cool and it was they would say nice for spring spring shipping, you know. And um, he went down there one day, and he discovered that some animal was uh, stealing some of the nuts and some of the apples. And he went over to Sears and Sears, Sears and Sears, and Sears, <laughs> Sears and, and his partner. <laughs> and he bought a, he bought a trap. Uh, bought two traps, one from each one of them, I guess, and, uh, and he uh, set one of the traps over by the, the, the hickory nuts and one by the apples. And I was talking to him the other day and he said he went down the cellar the next morning and sure enough, there was a great big uh, raccoon in one of those traps. I said, where did you catch him, by the apples? He said, no. I don't know if I, if, what the heck? <laughs> if, if when, I, when I go out all around the country and, and uh, to England, we've been, we've been a few places. Uh, uh, when I start to sing, I usually end my uh, performance by singing a song or two, one at least. And uh, I don't get up in the morning and go ah ha 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 and all that kind of business. I don't train. I don't train. I've never had any vocal training, and uh, so I. Uh, and I don't know when I say, when I start to sing. I don't know if what do you say. What do you say? You didn't have to tell me you had no training. If you love me half as much as I love you, you wouldn't worry me half as much as you do. You're nice to me when there's no one else around. You only build me up to let me down. If you miss me half as much as I miss you, you wouldn't stay away half as much as you do. I know that I would never be untrue If you only loved me half as much as I love you Thank you so much for helping us. You helped us a lot with your applause and your laughter and what's her name? She looked around like I pointed to someone else.
Is that who it was? All right. Well, thank you, and drive carefully when you go home. And tomorrow, too. There's some more food out there and some more drinks, if you like. Yeah. Thank you. I always leave you on a high note. <laughs>